Have you ever wondered why those massive trucks with the rotating drums never seem to stop spinning? You see them everywhere, rolling down highways, parked at construction sites, always with that barrel turning round and round. But here's what most folks don't realize. There's a $50,000 reason behind that constant rotation, and it's more critical than you might think. Before we dive deep into this engineering mystery, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're about to uncover some mind-blowing facts about these mechanical giants that you probably never heard before. Now, let's get one thing straight right from the start. Most people call these cement trucks, but that's actually a common mistake. What you're looking at is a concrete mixer truck. And there's a huge difference. The spinning drum isn't carrying cement. It's carrying concrete, which is a completely different beast altogether. So what exactly is concrete? Think of it as a carefully crafted recipe. You've got cement, which acts like the binding agent, basically the glue that holds everything together. Then you add sand and gravel which engineers call aggregate. These materials give the mixture its strength and bulk. Finally, you pour in water, and that's when the magic, or should I say chemistry, begins. The mixture will gradually harden and turn into solid rock. This is exactly why that drum must keep spinning. It's literally a race against time. But here's where things get really interesting, folks. Inside that rotating drum, there's some seriously clever engineering at work. The interior walls are lined with what's called helical fins. These are spiral-shaped metal blades that run along the inside surface. When the drum rotates in one direction, these fins lift the concrete mixture up and fold it over itself creating a constant churning motion. This churning serves multiple purposes. First, it prevents what engineers call segregation. Without constant mixing, the heavy gravel would sink to the bottom while the lighter cement paste would rise to the top. You'd end up with a separated mess instead of uniform concrete. Second, the mixing action keeps the chemical reaction from progressing too quickly in any one spot. Now here's the really cool part that most people never see. When it's time to pour the concrete, the driver doesn't just open a valve. Instead, they reverse the direction of the drum's rotation. Those same helical fins that were mixing the concrete now work like a giant screw pushing the mixture backward toward the discharge chute. It's like watching a massive mechanical magic trick in action. During transport, the drum typically rotates between 4 and 12 revolutions per minute. That might not sound fast, but it's the perfect speed to keep everything mixed without adding too much air or creating excessive friction that could heat up the mixture. Modern concrete trucks are equipped with some pretty sophisticated technology. Many have temperature sensors and onboard computers that automatically adjust the drum rotation based on ambient conditions and the specific concrete mix being carried. Some even have load cells that can measure exactly how much concrete is in the drum and slump sensors that detect the consistency of the mixture. But let's talk about the different types of these spinning giants, because they're not all the same. The standard drum mixer is what most folks are familiar with. It picks up ready-mixed concrete from a batching plant and delivers it to the job site. Then you've got volumetric mixer trucks, which are like mobile concrete plants. These carry separate compartments for cement, aggregate, and water mixing them on site in custom ratios. There are also concrete pump trucks, which don't actually carry concrete themselves. Instead, they use powerful hydraulic systems to pump concrete from mixer trucks 
through massive articulating booms that can reach incredible heights and distances. You'll also see many mixed trucks for smaller jobs in tight urban areas and agitator trucks designed for long distance transport with enhanced insulation systems. The drum is mounted at a slight angle on heavy duty rollers and it's powered by a hydraulic motor that gets its energy either from the truck's main engine or from what's called a PTO. The driver controls everything from inside the cab using a sophisticated dashboard panel. And many modern trucks even come with remote controls for operation from outside the vehicle. Remember how I mentioned that subscribe button earlier? Well, we're getting to the really expensive part now, so you definitely don't want to miss this. What if that drum stops spinning? This is where that $50,000 figure comes into play. And trust me, it's not pretty. Concrete typically begins to cure within 30 to 90 minutes after water is added, depending on temperature and other conditions. If the drum stops rotating during this critical window, you're looking at a potential disaster. When concrete hardens inside a stationary drum, it doesn't cure evenly. You get blockages, uneven hardening, and eventually the entire drum becomes filled with what's essentially a 20-ton block of solid rock. The truck can't dump its load, can't discharge anything, and is completely stuck. At this point, crews have to resort to extreme measures. They might try jackhammering the hardened concrete out piece by piece, which is back-breaking work that can take days. In the worst case scenarios, companies have had to use cutting torches to literally cut open the drum, remove all the hardened concrete, and then replace the entire mixing unit. This process can easily cost $50,000 or more, not to mention the lost time and productivity. That's why concrete companies invest heavily in safety systems. Many trucks have automatic idle spin features that keep the drum rotating even when parked. There are backup motors in case the primary PTO system fails and emergency dump features that can release the concrete before it has a chance to set up completely. The spinning isn't just about preventing disasters, it's about maintaining quality. Professional concrete work requires precise consistency, and that only comes from continuous mixing. The helical fins inside the drum are designed with specific angles and spacing to create optimal flow patterns. Too much mixing can introduce unwanted air bubbles, while too little mixing results in segregation and weak spots in the final product. Different concrete mixes require different handling techniques. High strength concrete used in skyscrapers needs more aggressive mixing than the standard mix used for sidewalks. Decorative concrete with special additives might require gentler handling to preserve the integrity of color pigments or special aggregates. The logistics of concrete delivery is like a carefully choreographed dance. Batching plants schedule truck departures based on traffic conditions, job site requirements, and the working time of specific concrete mixes. Drivers communicate constantly with dispatchers and job site supervisors to ensure perfect timing. On large construction projects, you might see multiple types of concrete trucks working together. Standard mixers feed concrete pump trucks, which then use their articulating booms to place concrete in hard to reach areas like upper floors of buildings or over obstacles. Volumetric trucks stand by for last minute adjustments or small pours that don't justify a full mixer truck. The technology keeps advancing too. GPS tracking allows companies to monitor their entire fleet in real time. Onboard diagnostics 
can predict maintenance needs before breakdowns occur. Some trucks even have automated washing systems that clean the drum between different types of concrete to prevent contamination. Modern concrete trucks also feature sophisticated chute systems for precise placement. These can be extended, angled, and even fitted with flexible hoses for pinpoint accuracy. Remote controls allow operators to position and discharge concrete from outside the cab, improving safety and precision. The environmental impact of concrete production has led to innovations in truck design as well. More efficient engines reduce fuel consumption, while improved mixing systems ensure less waste. Some companies are experimenting with electric-powered mixing systems for urban deliveries where noise and emissions are concerns. Quality control is paramount in the concrete industry. Drivers are trained to recognize signs of problems, changes in the concrete's appearance, or variations in discharge characteristics. They carry slump cones to test concrete consistency and can communicate with the batching plant to make adjustments if needed. The maintenance of these spinning systems is crucial. The hydraulic motors, roller bearings, and drive systems all require regular inspection and service. The helical fins inside the drum wear over time and need replacement. Even the drum itself can develop cracks or wear spots that affect mixing efficiency. So the next time you see one of these spinning giants rolling down the road, you'll know exactly what's happening inside that rotating drum. It's not just mixing, it's a precisely controlled chemical and mechanical process that's racing against time. Every revolution of that drum is preventing a potential $50,000 disaster while ensuring that the concrete arrives at the job site in perfect condition. The constant spinning of concrete mixer trucks represents one of the most elegant solutions in industrial engineering. A simple rotation that solves complex problems of chemistry, logistics, and economics all at once. Here's something to remember. In construction, as in life, it's not about standing still. It's about keeping things moving in the right direction. Those spinning drums are a perfect example of how continuous motion creates lasting strength. If this opened your eyes to the incredible engineering behind these everyday machines, smash that like button and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the mechanical world around us. Drop a comment and let us know. What's the most surprising thing you learned about concrete trucks today?